Okay, as we start off, I just want to mark off my landmarks. I have my retromolar pad in this region, as well as here. Right? I also have my masitic notch area here. Buckle shelf, as you can see here. This tissue reflection point, as I was mentioning in the upper, the area where the tissue is attached to the bone and leaving the bone to the unattached mucosa. This junction the tissue reflection point is an important landmark in constructing special tray. So you want to stick to your tissue reflection point. And as you can see in the labial part of the mouth, the tissues are attached very high, very close to the crest of the ridge. And here again we have our buckle shelf area coming down to the masitic notch. So from the lingual side, you want to travel down from your retromolar pad. Again, tissue reflection point, keep it to the attachment area, climbing up back to your retromolar pad all the way. And then you have your lingual frenum very clearly here. And you want to just lift off from the frenum a bit because you want to give space to the tongue. You want to come out on this side again in the tissue reflection point. Continue up all the way to your retromolar pad. So that forms the first primary outline of your special tray construction. Now, as I told you before, as you did with the maxillary, you're going to draw a line that's two millimeter above this so that we will have enough space for our green stick impression compound. I want to maintain the same shape. Interestingly, I don't want to do that in my retromolar pad area. So I'm just going to stay short of the retromolar pad. Okay, I'm going to blend in there. And in all other areas, I'm going to just follow my black line. and go with my tray extension line and blend into the retromolar pad. In the lingual also, you want to keep lingual reduction to a minimal. So I'm going to just keep it one millimeter short, slightly short, shy of my black line, just about one millimeter up, coming here, lingual frenum, coming over to this side, from here, just one millimeter going, blending into my retromolar pad. So I'm going to now add some wax to the crest of my ridge because you know the crest of the mandibular ridge is usually very thin and unless it's well rounded you don't want to use it as a stress bearing area here some areas of it are well rounded but some areas of it are sharp like a knife and you see some prominences here which were denuding the impression so possibly those areas need some relief as well this area here looks okay but this is a bit sharp this irregular so I would like to just put a thin layer of wax across the crest of the ridge so that there's not too much pressure on that. Obviously I want to leave my buckle shelf area open on both sides because that is a pressure stress bearing area. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece of wax, heat my instrument a little bit. Thin piece of wax and then keep away this and to just soften this wax I'm going to just adapt it along the crest of the ridge Okay. 
Now one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to spare my retromolar pad because I want to compress it. It's just like the posterior palatal seal area, I want to compress it and I want to leave the mesitic notch areas open. I don't want to cover those areas <coughs> with wax. Okay. So I've got that off. How come? 